guys welcome back to the channel i hope you guys are doing great today today's video i am back doing another chat gpt ux design crossover we're going to be talking about how you can use chat gpt as a ux designer if you're a student if you're boot camp all the different ways that it can help you i'm going to be going through five different ways that you can use chat gpt and ai in general to assist you as a ux designer not that i think it'll take your job i'll get into that at the end of the video but just to kind of give you guys some ideas on how you can use these tools to help you in your workday and in your boot camp so if that interests you i hope you guys think about subscribing commenting liking all that good stuff so grab coffee grab a snack and let's get into it back in january and i'll put it in the card somewhere talking about um, UX design and chat GPT. And I believe that was in January. We are now in April, a lot has changed. So not a lot has changed, but a lot has been updated. And I'm always reading like articles and like little blog posts about different ways that people are using it. And so I find that really interesting. So I kind of just combined some great tips that I saw as well as some things that I thought about for myself. And we'll just kind of go through those. And I will be sharing my screen. I'll show you all the prompts that I put into it. And then yeah, we'll go from there. I mentioned this in my past video talking about chat gpt and design and i think this applies to any job i think to reference spider-man <laughs> you know with great power comes great responsibility i think ai and specifically chat gpt is a great resource it's a great thought starter it's a great tool for that i don't think it's going to replace actual work and i don't think it should i don't think you should take something it gives you like let's say you ask it to create a design system. I don't think you could take that literally word for word, line for line and just implement without having any human editing, any human oversight. So that's where I think people have to be careful that it is a great tool, but it is a tool and you are still the human user of that tool. So I hope that makes sense. Anyway, let's get into the first one. And I think this one is a really great, um, tip for anybody that's going through a UX bootcamp as a new designer and you're still trying to think through like okay do I have everything I need for set design um speaking of bootcamps I do have a link down in my description box if you guys are thinking about doing springboard I just did a video about um how I chose my bootcamp and I went through springboard if you're interested you can get a thousand dollars off any of the programs the link is down in the description first thing I'm going to ask it to do and I will pop over to my screen we are going to ask it to create a checklist for UI elements for a calendar feature. So if I'm coming in as a bootcamp student and I just designed some kind of app that has, let's say, a calendar feature to it, or maybe it's even a scheduling app, like some new competitor to, let's say, Calendly. And I want to make sure that I've got all the UI elements covered and I'm still kind of new and I'm still trying to make sure that I have all of that. So um, this is already creating a very long list by the looks of it, um, some things for us to keep in mind. So I asked it to create the checklist for UI elements, and then it's giving me literally a list of what to make sure to include. So a date selector, month, day, week view, displays, event buttons, adding events, that kind of thing. Can we make this more of a checkbox? list slash to-do list. I'm not sure. I'm always testing what to say to ChatGPT. Okay, so great. It's giving us a to-do list. So as you're doing, as you're designing, whatever you're doing, your case study, you could literally use this as a resource to be like, okay, do I have this? Do I have this? Do I have that? So that's how I would use that prompt. So another popular thing that I've seen people asking the using ChatGPT for is to create copy for anything in a website, you know, like the lorem ipsum, like kind of just filler text. People are now using chat GPT to, you know, input copy. Um, this prompt is that as well, but it's a little bit more specific to UX and kind of UX writing. So we are going to ask it to, we're going to ask it to create 10 copies for your password has expired. You need to set a new password, something like that. And so it's gonna give us 10 variations of that message. And the reason I like to bring this one up is because you can get super specific. Um, it's great for like filler texts and kind of just about me sections, anything like that. But if you need something that's very detailed, I like that this one has the option, giving us some pretty solid options. So 
your password expired, please reset your password and continue using our services. We're sorry, your pass, you know, all kinds of great things. Um, and you guys can kind of read through these, but this is another great way to use it. In no means does this replace a UX writer. We have a UX writer on our team and she is amazing. Okay, I don't know how she does it. It doesn't replace the people on your team, but it can help you if you're in a pinch of like, okay, I just need something. I don't necessarily need to bring the writer into this, but I just need to get something onto my design and then we can iterate further. Yeah, that's how I use that one. The next thing, and I feel like I might have touched on um, this in my last video, but I still think this might be one of my favorite features because I remember as I was going through my boot camp and we had to do competitive analysis for every project that we did. And it was kind of hard to get all of that research. It was not the type of research that I was used to doing. So I think ChatGPT's competitive analysis feature is so good, so good. So we're gonna do it again, similarly here. We're gonna say, who are Nike's biggest competitors? Um, actually, who are Nike's top three? Let's even do top two, top two competitors. Let's keep it narrowed down. Okay, so it's gonna give me the list of the competitors. We see Adidas, of course, Under Armour. Great. So I think I'm gonna even take a step further. Organize this into a comparison table. Excuse my spelling mistake. So now it's breaking out all this information. Some of this you are gonna have to parse through and maybe you need it to be a little bit more specific. Um, I don't know if you necessarily need the brand ambassadors, but this is kind of what I'm saying about, you still have to take the information that it gives you, but still like tweak it to make it make sense for what you need it to do. So, and it's nice that there, you have like the table feature cause it just, it looks good to my visual eye. Um, yeah, so that is how I would handle that prompt. To kind of piggyback off of that competitive analysis, another great way that you can use it is if you are, let's say in this example, we are creating a new podcast app. So there's tons of, are there tons of podcast apps? I don't know, I'm thinking of like Patreon, Spotify, technically. Um, do people still put podcasts on SoundCloud? I don't know, that's where I first, anyway, anyway. So I'd say you're designing a podcast app and you want to understand like the curtain flaws about it. Let's see what chat GPT can help us with. We are going to ask it, give me the five biggest UX flaws in podcast apps. And honestly, I wish I had thought of this one when I was doing my bootcamp because as I was creating, like, I remember one of the projects I did was this company called Savvy and it was like a financial savings app. And I had competitors like Mint and true bill which is no longer a thing now rocket money and this would have been great to kind of net, figure out like okay these are the flaws let me see if i can create something that addresses these problems so it's giving us here okay confusing navigation lack of personalized recommendations poor search functionality that's a huge one bad search kills it every time um limited playback options of oh, speed intros oh okay that's interesting and then inconsistent UI. Okay, see, there's stuff that I didn't even know about. And maybe as you are thinking about something in your bootcamp or in your current job, um, trying to understand the flaws, maybe you can make sure you address these problems before they even become problems. So this one's really cool actually. So the more you know, guys, the more you know, look at us learning together. The other thing, the other prompt I wanna put in here more relates to the visual design. And I think this this prompt could be great if you are just kind of fact-finding and in the discovery phase of what am I trying to create and why, and just need some kind of thought starters. This one is gonna be relating more to color, which I love. And we are going to ask it, what color palette should I use for a new luxury home decor website? We'll say, give me the hex codes. It's going to tell us elegant and sophisticated and then some color uh, suggestions with the hex codes. So we see a navy, we see a gray, rich emerald, wonderful. This sounds like a very nice palette, actually. I'm liking this. I'm liking this. And I like that it gives a little description, like jewel tones add a touch of opulence. And man, guys, I could have used this when I was in interior design. My God. Damn. Okay. And it also says like where you can use them in the website. So that's cool. So we're going to take 
this hex code of this deep navy blue and I'm gonna pop over to colors here. Okay, so this is the color, this 001F54. Um, and I don't know if, if I've mentioned colors before, but I love it. If I don't, I don't even use it for work. I use it for my own like personal stuff and like personal branding. Um, and I just love that it creates such composed color palettes. I don't even think about it, but I just wanted to see what the hex code was. Like, let's do this, which emerald color. I don't know if it'll let me do both, but okay. Here we go. That's the rich emerald color. So you can you can just see like what color it's going to give you. That is another great way just to get even thought starters on the palette. And you can always tweak it, but again, it did a pretty good job. I'll give it that. It did pretty good. Before we wrap up, I did just want to mention, um, and I touched on it earlier at the start of the video, of just about ChatGPT and AI in general and taking over jobs. I don't feel and watch, I put this on the internet and then two years later, AI has taken over, but I do not feel that it's going to take over my job as a UX designer specifically, because UX design has such a human element in the roots of what it is as a profession. There's always going to be the need to understand people, to empathize. There's always going to be the need for a person to really see the pain points in somebody. And yes, ChatGPT can give me the pain points, but how am I going to validate that if I don't have a human person to speak to or somebody speak to me? So that's why I think we're probably going to be good. There was a TikTok that was just going around, and I think you guys probably have seen it, and I'll see if I can link it, where it was the developers, the people, the people behind OpenAI, just like drew out a very loose wireframe of what they wanted to create, and then they put in GPT, who created code to create this like my joke website. And when I saw that, I was like, I'm good. <laughs> I'm not take I, I'm good. There's still going to be need for designers because. There's so much that technology can't interpret that I feel like designers still can. So that's just my little personal take on it. I think every industry could be a little bit different. Do I think some industries, yeah, could maybe be obsolete? I don't want to say obsolete, guys. I don't know. I just feel like there's there's has to be a balance. I don't think we could necessarily 100% say, okay, chat GPT, this industry is done. I don't feel like it'll be like that, but who knows? Who knows, guys? Um, just my thoughts. And like I mentioned, use these tools responsibly, okay? If you're thinking about boot camps and want to use ChatGPT in your boot camp, I highly recommend Springboard. The link is down in my description box to get a thousand dollars off any of the programs. So check it out. Yeah, guys, I've rambled enough. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys like this kind of content. I try to intersperse, obviously, like UX and tech and work stuff with, you know, some other lifestyle stuff. So if you guys like this video, I hope thinking about commenting, subscribing, liking, all those good things. Drop me any questions down below. And with that, guys, I will see you next time.